Good afternoon. My name is Edward Sanchez Oberholzer. I'm the resident priest here at the Joseph Priestley Zen Sangha in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. We're an affiliate of Empty Moon Zen. My son was born. My wife and I moved to a small Cape Cod farmhouse nestled among cornfields, forests, and cow pastures about a mile down a country road from the beach just south of New Bedford, Massachusetts. On weekends, I used to hoist my son up on my shoulders and go walking through the woods, down to the beach, going from forest to meadow and back again. Once, we were in a, a clearing when a fox came trotting down the path towards us. He didn't notice us until suddenly he looked up, and I could swear what I saw crossing his mind was, oops, uh, I think I hear my mother calling. He looked at us, looked back over his shoulder, and turned, trotting back the way he came. Now, perhaps not in so many words, but looking into that fox's eyes, I could tell he'd made a mistake, and moreover, that he knew he made a mistake. I remember walking into a pasture with four or five Holsteins, great placid animals. I, I walked over to one, hoping to give my son the experience of getting up close to a cow. Right there, next to that cow's face, I found myself looking into her eye, a huge black orb, seemingly all iris was perhaps the most alien creature I'd ever been with. Here in the West, we're haunted by that old idea of the great chain of being. Sure, Darwin swept that aside for the scientific community and for those of us with some science literacy, but it does seem to live on, coloring our thoughts, whether we like it or not, a kind of inherent bias. You know the idea, there, there's a line from the inanimate through various life forms up to human and beyond, from angels up to the divine, a kind of teleology carrying the clear message that higher is better and that lower is worse and that we are separated from the animal world by possessing a soul. Darwin did not quite lay this to rest, even with me, and my sense of alienation from that cow is a trace of it. This notion that animals and humans are different in kind has a long and storied career. Descartes once threw a cat out of a window, claiming that the cat's yowls were the mechanical result of its machine-like nature. Recently, the Pope was mistakenly quoted as saying that pets would go to heaven. This was disavowed later by the Vatican. No, your dog doesn't have a soul. At least if you believe orthodox theology. Only humans can partake in the divine. Buddhism has an interesting take on the great chain of being, arguably not as aspirational as the West's. Now, in, in Buddhism, we talk of the six realms of being, gods, titans, humans, animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. We find ourselves in one realm or another dependent upon how we conducted ourselves in past lives. And while it would seem that being reborn as a god or a titan would be something we should aspire to, gods and titans live lives far more comfortable than we, yet gods have no motivation to seek enlightenment, to step off the wheel of samsara. Who would, living in the Tushita heaven with all your wants and desires taken care of? Gods believe themselves to be immortal, deluded fools that they are, and don't see their end coming until it's right upon them. An interesting question then, wouldn't being reborn as a god be a detriment? Now, animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings are 
too busy trying to survive to seek out enlightenment, too busy avoiding predators, scavenging for food. We alone have the leisure and the incentive to seek out the way. We alone walk that delicate balance between suffering and opportunity that can bring about an awakening. At least, that's Buddhist orthodoxy. So here's a question. If, if I don't buy this, if I don't buy all of this, am, am I a bad Buddhist? There are any number of Buddhist positions I would question. There, there is the what is the bare minimum that I could agree with and still be considered a Buddhist? What sort of interpretive dance can I make to make it so? The ad I put up for sitting at the Thomas Beaver Free Library and at Bucknell University both say no beliefs necessary. Not quite true, but a good start. I gaze into an animal's eyes and what looks back at me. Sure, I, I understand I could simply be reading my own self-consciousness into those eyes, alien or not. But the same could be said of each of us when, when we look at one another. When I see the awareness of the mistake made in the eyes of that fox, was I seeing my own reaction? When I see in the eyes of a friend his own realization of a mistake, could I not be engaged in the same error? How do we know? How do we know what goes on with a fox, with a crow, with a cow, with your dog, my cat? This notion of consciousness of what it means to be self-aware strikes me as being at the center of our Zen practice. Dogen told us to turn the lamp within, and I believe that in following his words, we are compelled to accept what we find. You know, there, there's a certain wonderful irony that my Zen practice flourished while sitting with my teacher's sangha at the First Unitarian Society of Newton, Massachusetts. Waiting outside his office for Doksan one evening, I realized that the hallway contained the portraits of prior ministers of that church, one of whom was the father of the Princeton psychologist Julian Jaynes. One of my first introductions to the mysteries of self-consciousness was his book, The Origin of Consciousness in the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind. John Gray, the British political philosopher, very much not the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. John Gray understands the Egyptian worship of cats as resting with cats being at ease with where and what they are. They are at home in the moment with no separation between themselves and what they do. Just this. Must I say that animals can't, that they don't partake in enlightenment? That it's the privilege of humans alone? As Wittgenstein said, if by eternity is meant not endless temporal duration, but timelessness, then he lives eternally who lives in the present. I see this being in the moment, this presence all around me, it's this timelessness, this eternity, I sense. And no, I, I don't hold that it's limited to humans or to cats. No, crows, chipmunks, beetles, worms, you, me, all are blessed.